Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. We are making the Crafty Companion. We're making a workstation. We're making this workstation, as a matter of fact. This one is the Crafty Cubbies with the Crafty Top Tray. And then we're going to add the uh, Crafty Mini Racks on top. And this one is pictured right here in the templates. It's the Crafty Workstation with the Crafty Mini Racks. See the Mini Racks up there? So this is the one we're making, and so if you want to start at the beginning of this project, I will put a link right here. There's a specific playlist just for this project, so you can go from start to finish and go step by step in order with me, and it starts with the introduction to the templates, then I'll show you how to make this workbook, and this is, you don't get this as a physical item when you buy the templates. All the templates are uh, instant downloads, digital downloads that you have to print yourself, so there's a, a video on how I made my workbook, um, and then it goes on from there. So these templates are available in my Etsy shop, and I'll have a link down below for that. And I also have a special Amazon list just for the projects that we're making with the Crafty Companion printable templates. I almost said many of them. <laughs> um, so everything that I use, or to the equivalent of, to the best of my ability, is linked in that playlist. I'll have that link down below as well. Okay, so what we're going to do is... Uh, I've already, we're going to make the crafty trays today, but I've already pre-made some of them because it would just take too long to make all of these um, on video. So this is the A-sized crafty cubby and the uh, A-sized crafty trays. So this is the large. And then these are the C-sized crafty cubby with the medium-sized crafty trays in there. Okay, so yes, that is supposed to be there. That is supposed to be enough room so that when you're working, you can easily get these crafty trays in and out, no problem. You don't even have to look, so you can do it one-handed if you wanted to. That was my whole goal, is to be able to reach over to my side and grab one of these little trays, pull it out and get what I need, and put it back in without the whole thing coming with it. Do you know? Okay, so this is the B-sized Crafty Cubby here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a large, a medium, and a small, or a filler, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to make one of each for the B. So that is what we are going to do today. So in the Crafty Tray section, we are going to need... We're going to need the... On page two, we're going to need the Crafty Tray Large Base. And then we're going to need the B front and back panel. So make sure you grab the B if you're making a B. Or make sure you grab the A if you're making the A. And so on and so forth. So I need the large crafty tray base and large crafty, or I mean, sorry, the B front and back for the large. And then also on the side panel, I'm going to need the B side panel for the crafty tray. So this one will fit on all three of these different sizes. So this is the side panel. Then I also need the, on page two, I need the Crafty Tray Medium Base and the size B Medium Front and Back Piece. So whatever size Crafty Cubby you have, that's what you need to cors correspond with. Correspond? Is that the right word? I think it is. <laughs> and then I'm going to need one more, and that is this one over here. This is the small small crafty cubby. I'm sorry. This is the small crafty tray, so I'm going to need the base for that and then the little front panel for that. The B, the size B front panel for the small crafty tray. This is the small tray, like a little filler tray. I love it. It's adorable. Let me see if I can grab one. Here's one. See, isn't this just, isn't that just the cutest thing ever? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not ever, but it's super cute. So we need those three things, those, those three sets of templates. And then I'm going to try to grab some of these. These are all the leftover pieces that we've got so far from making the two uh, workstations. So we are, we're currently working on this one, but we've already made this one. So this one is the, um, the Crafty Workstation that has the divider slots on the top. So if you want to see how we made this from start to finish, I'll put a link here and down below um, and it'll take you through a step by step on how to make this as well. So these are the big scraps that I have 
left over and then I've got some small scraps on um, over here that I might end up using for different things if it, if it fits if it doesn't fit then then it's not gonna work okay alrighty so this is we're using medium weight chipboard it is 30 approximately 30 points and approximately 1 16th of an inch thick do not use heavy chipboard um, if you use lightweight chipboard, you're going to have to do a few layers um, and glue them together and put something heavy on them and let them dry and all of that. Uh, but the medium weight chipboard is the perfect size. So now I'm going to, let's see if I can, oh that one's almost darn near perfect, huh? So I'm going to go ahead and what you need is you need one base from each size right you need one of each one of these right so there's like the base and then you're going to need two of these long or these side panels here you're going to need two per tray so we're going to need six of these pieces well it's not wide enough yet i was hoping i could do like a Right. let's see so I'm gonna need six of these and then you're gonna need for the front and back panels for each size tray you're gonna need two of each one of those so I'm going to take a minute and I'm gonna trace all of these things out and then I will be back I darn near cut everything out before I turn the camera back on I forgot um, I got everything cut out but this one so I just wanted to show you what I do to cut it out. This is a Scorpow cutting mat, a Tim Holtz ruler, and a Scotch craft knife. And this is just one way to cut through chipboard. Uh, I just go slow and steady. I just make several passes and it ends up being a very clean cut. If you press really hard, you're just going to end up getting mad at the chipboard and at yourself. So just go slow and make several passes. So it is just like that. So each one of your crafty trays need four pieces. So it needs a front and a back, a middle, and two sides. Okay? So all three of my trays here have those, and I need to move these parts out of the way so they don't get lost. I don't want to lose my, my templates. Okay, so this is the large tray, and that's this one right here. The full crafty trays are these. So there's the B full crafty tray if you wanted to make that a full tray. Um, this is from the other workstation. So you can do that as well. So this is a full, and this is a large, and this is a medium, this, this size here, and then the small little filler tray that we'll sh I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> what I've been doing is I've been taking some tape, just regular tape, and I've just been attaching them together like so and if you do this in an assembly line fashion it's a lot faster than doing every step for one and then going back and doing every step for one it's just it's just this this is just faster so I'm gonna this way I don't lose any of my pieces and my little trays stay together as I go through each step that needs to happen um, for a finished, you know, for a finished like product. Oh. So anyway, I call this my little helping hand. Um, it just makes my life a little bit easier. So here's the medium. It's a step that you can completely bypass. You do not have to do this step. I like doing it. So it's just a personal preference. All right, so the next step is I'm going to, uh, you don't have to do yours this way. I, don't know, I feel like a broken record when I keep saying it, but it's true. You do not have to do yours this way. This is just the way that I found works best for me. I did cut my finger, by golly. 
Boy, being in the construction work here sure can be painful. <laughs> so this is a six inch roll of, of double-sided adhesive from scrapbook.com. And I think I'm going to, I'm just going to lay this down on here. That is the side that I put the tape on. Then I'm going to cut, cut it away from, oops, let's do it this way first, from the roll. Okay, and then cut the excess off. And then this piece, I've got a, I've got a, a scrap. So this is from one of the eight and a half by 11 sheets that I have. So I'm just going to stick that on there, All right? And then I'm going to trim these away, and I'm going to keep them because if you've watched the assembly of the trays before, you know why I'm keeping them because we're going to use them here in just a minute. Oh, and I got a paper cut there. Oh my goodness! I'm just being mean to myself here. Okay, so there's one, All right? So on the back side here, and then I'm gonna burnish. So let's go ahead and do the other two. So next up, I'm going to grab a piece. This is a 65 pound 12 by 12 white cardstock by Recollections. Um, I'm probably going to need two pieces. I'm going to grab two. I might have a scrap from another pack that I might be able to use for the smaller one. We'll see. We shall see. Oh yeah. So I'm going to use a scrap for that. So if you've got scraps, you guys, please use them. Oh, scrap for that. And I don't have a scrap for this. Are you kidding? Maybe I don't need. Let's see. Is this one big enough? No. Well, shucks. Okay. So I'll need one sheet. I don't need two. I just need one. But that's the cardstock I'm using. Just so you know. Can I go that away? Nope, almost. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the backing off of the tape we just applied to the back of our tray. And then we're going to flip it around and touch it down. Oh. like that okay and then we're gonna cut it away there's another scrap Okay, so there's one. So now I'm going to go through and do this for all three of these. Okay, so then the next step that you want to do is you want to go ahead and fold all of your side panels in and give it a good burnish with your bone folder. And I've already done those two. So then what you want to do is flip it back onto this side and start adding your little squares of tape back onto those little corners. 
I know they didn't come off of that corner, but they come off of the, um, I can't think of what I'm trying to say. <laughs> they came off of the tape row, so we cut them, we sliced them away, and now we're using them on the paper. So we're going to go ahead and do that for all of these. So again, today's still the first day of school. Like I said, it's like his like I said in the last video <laughs> and I just can't seem to um I just can't seem to get myself I don't know I don't even know the right word but I'm trying to take advantage of the quiet so it's his first day it's his, it's his last first day of high school it's like, yeah that's exactly what it is so yeah Pretty exciting. He was he was in an okay mood this morning. He hadn't gotten up that well. That's not true. He's he's gotten up um, early during the summer break too, just not consistently. Okay, so we've got those down. You may want to take a minute and go ahead and burnish all of them down. So then, once you do that, you want to come along and slice. On the long side panel, you just want to slice that cardstock. Right, so you got something that looks like this, a little flap. And then you want to come in and do this notchy kind of thing here. And you can even take a little bit off of that length. So I am going to, oh, sorry about my printer. I just started up. I'm going to go ahead and do this to all of them and then I'll be back. Okay, so all of them, I've tabbed each one of their little tabs. So then all you need to do is flip it over this way, pull both of those little tabs in, and remove the tape backing. I'm gonna go ahead and do all four. And then you just wanna lift it up have the two inside corners meet there and do it on all four corners and I never I mean I almost never cut these correctly so there is plenty of room for error in your uh, cubby so if you made them if it's a little wonky if it's not the perfectly you know if it's not a perfect rectangle you know um it'll still fit in your crafty cubby so here's the small one right that's the little filler of course we're not done with that yet so the great the great thing about being able to completely customize your workstation is that if you're working along and you're like, okay, I don't need the full tray, I just need these little trays, then you go and you swap it out. So I have that many options. So if I'm working along and I'm like, okay, I need a full tray. These little trays are getting on my nerves. I need, I need more space for whatever project I'm doing. I'll just go grab one of my full trays and stick that in there instead. So it might be a good idea to go ahead and make uh, one of each size tray. So I'll make one of each size in the size A and one of each size in the size B and one of each in the size C. And that way you can manipulate, you know, the situation as needed. So that's one of the great things about it, I think. I think it's a great thing anyway. <laughs> Because, <laughs> you I mean, you need different things for different projects. Not every project is the same. So, all right, so we're going to go through. I forgot to burnish. So you want to burnish those tabs down. We still have um, to wrap the edges, but there we go. So now I'm going to have three crafty trays in the top, three in the middle, and two in the bottom. So... You can put these whichever way you want. So you want to do it like that. It doesn't matter. Whichever, however you want to situate them in here is totally fine. Okay, the next step is we're going to wrap the edges of our crafty trays. So I have cut one, two, 
three, four, five, six strips that measure two, let's see, that measure two and a quarter wide by 12. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna put it in our scoreboard and we're gonna score a half of inch, a half of an inch away from the edge. So in this case, it would be one and three fourths. This is a We Are Memory Keeper scoreboard and this is a pencil, a Teflon bone folder. All right, both of these are linked in my Amazon. And yes, I do love it. Absolutely love it. I haven't ripped through not one piece of paper and it's scoring beautifully. I love it. And it takes, the, it takes a little bit of pressure off my hand, too. I'm not quite sure how to explain it. You just have to experience it, I think. Is this just one? I guess so. Okay. So I'm going to take this two inch. This is two inch scrapbook.com tape. Right? So we can do that. And then we could put a quarter of an inch there. And I like the whole thing to be covered. You don't have to, of course, if you don't want to, but I like the whole thing to be covered because I, I want all the joints and everything to have some adhesive on it. This is just quarter of an inch. And I was thinking we could have um, covered the whole backside of the cardstock, but then it's hard to score and fold. So this is just this is just an easier way for me. So I'm gonna cover, I think I'm gonna go ahead and cover all of them like that. I'm gonna cover all of these strips the exact same way and then I'll be back. Okay, so I did change my mind. So I did the three strips with the two inch width and then the quarter of an inch and then for the other three, it's more important to have separate pieces of tape on them. So what I ended up doing is this is three eighths of an inch. This one is score pal or score tape sequin. Okay, and I know it has an end. Okay, <laughs> this one is sequin, and we're just going to run the part that we the part that we scored that half an inch. We're going to put a piece of this there. I've already done one, so <laughs> in case you're wondering. Then we're going to take one inch, or if you just want to keep putting um, that, that size on there, you go right ahead. That's totally fine. I'm using this one inch because I have it. Use what you have. Make do with what you got. So then on next to that, I put a one inch strip. And then... Um, Next to that, I did another three eighths of an inch and then a quarter of an inch. Only because I don't have a three fourths of an inch. <laughs> so just use what you have. It's just important that on three of the strips that you, on one side, you have a single strip on that part that we uh, scored and then the rest of it, you can have it one solid if you have it. But if you don't have solid, just use what you have. You could use several rows of your quarter of an inch you know, you can go down. Let's see how many times would it take. One, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven. Seven strips per strip. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Okay, so the first set of strips that we made, where we've got the two inch strip and then the quarter of an inch, all three of these, I think I'm going to move this out of the way for a minute. All three of these, I need to cut them down. These are going to be on the sides. I'm running out of space, you guys. So these are going to get cut down to five and three fourths. Shoot. This is hard to get. Oh, you know what? Actually, I think I figured it out. For my, for mine, for my precision, if I butt it up even with this side when it's folded, that's five and three fourths. That's what I think I have figured out. Double check. Yes! Okay. So 
So you're going to need six pieces of this. That's it. Five and three fourths. So three strips will make the six pieces. Okay, so then one of these strips, let's see, I've got it, my measurements wrote down. And basically what you want to do is you want to take your box. So we're, gonna, we're, we're doing the front now. You want to take your box and measure it and then add about an inch, maybe three-fourths of an inch or an inch on either side. So you just want to add uh, an inch and a half to two inches. However much you want to do, that's what you kind of want to add to wrap around the front. So it really just depends on what size you made. But for the, the biggest one, we need two six and a half inch strips, or that's what I'm cutting mine down to. And I'm going to keep that because I bet we could use that for another one. So six and a half. So we got two of those. That's for the front and the back. And then for the medium size one, we need a four and a half. So cut that down to four and a half. Cut this down to four and a half. So there's the medium size. And then the smallest one, we need three and a quarter. So I just need two and three and a quarter. Okay. Put that large piece there aside for another tree. All right, I'm going to try to keep these separated. Okay. And then these are all the same. These are all the same side panel, so that's not going to matter. So let's start with the largest one. And... Um, I'm going to go ahead and I should have prepped these. I forgot. We're going to go ahead and prep the score on all of them. It's harder to do once tape is on there, but it's doable. I think I do this different every time. I'm showing you all kinds of ways, I think. <laughs> I just don't think there's a wrong way to do it. You know, if you want to wrap your chipboard a certain way, you do it. You do it. Okay. So for this, we're going to go ahead and remove all of the tape backing. Well, I guess we don't have to. Yeah, because of the way I put my tape on. Yeah, let's go ahead and remove all the tape backing. And the part that we scored is going on the bottom. So what you want to do is lay it on that side there. Kind of gently work that into place. And it's not, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Well, that's, a, that's not even close to being 100% perfect. <laughs> so you stick it to the bottom. And then you want to stick it to the side here. Then you want to fold it over on top like this and burnish it down to that top and then fold it to the inside and burnish that down. Okay, we'll do another one. So this is probably one of those things that if you were uncomfortable having all this exposed sticky um, you would just want to put, make sure you have separate pieces on the tab part and then the rest of it. So just know that the tabbed, the, um, the uh, what's this called? The half inch part that we scored goes on the bottom. Just helps to give you a good guideline of where you're going. Flip it over to the side. Burnish. And flip it around. Okay. So I'm going to do all the sides like that. Just the long sides, not the short sides. Um, I'm going to do all the long sides and I'll be right back. I've got the long sides wrapped on all three of these. 
Um, and then I was just sitting here looking, I was prepping these and I was like, you know, even these don't need to be separately taped. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, my brain is just not working today, you guys. <laughs> Let's start. Let me do the, let me do the small one with you guys. So I'm going to take up, since I've got it this away, I'm going to take the one inch portion off. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on here and try to gauge, you know, it to be in the middle. I'm going to lay it on that half inch tab because that goes on the bottom. And then I'm going to bring that side up, right? So I guess it worked out, the one inch on that worked out. So now what we can do is, I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing off of these. It's just, you know, it's, it's intimidating to have so much exposed adhesive. Like, my husband just called, and he, he said, I'm on my way home. And I was like, okay, let me know when you get here because I'm recording. And he was like, well, hurry up, right? So, and I'm like, no, you don't understand. I might be right smack in the middle of something with exposed adhesive, and, and you ruin it, and I have to start over. <laughs> you come barging in because he's not quiet. All right, so we're wrapping around like that. He is not quiet at all. He thinks he's quiet, but he's not quiet. He means well. Okay, so we've wrapped it around both sides. So now what we want to do is we want to go through and, whoop, I didn't mean to take the whole corner out, but it happens. And we're going to do that on both corners. The bottom's easiest because we've already scored it. So that's why I like to start with the bottom. So you just wrap those little tabs around. And if you left your corner piece there, just pull it in like that. And then you wrap that piece around and voila. These are Tim Holtz tonic scissors, by the way. I, I caught him um, on Facebook Live today and I said hi or whatever. And I feel like I know him. I feel like I say his name so much. I feel like we're buddies. <laughs> Even though I've never met him, he doesn't know me from Adam. But um, I just think it's funny. Oh, that I say his name so much and I feel like I know him. All right, so I'm going to flip these tabs over. Like that. Flip them in, burnish a little, and then I'm going to pull that corner piece in, and then flip this in. Okay, so then let's do it one more time together, and then I'll do the other ones off camera. So I'm just going to expose the middle part there. I'm going to sit the crafty tray onto that half inch part that we that we scored and I'm going to put it try to put it in the middle and then attach that part there. And I'm going to remove the backing from these tapes. Anyway, so I thought that was funny. I kind of chuckled at myself when I was saying hi in his live. I was like, hey, I say your name all the time. All right, pinch those little corners. Start. A, wow, I am. I need some food. I think. Look at me shaking. Good grief. Or am I in a hurry because my hubby's on the way home? <laughs> okay. I want to make sure I get this done for you guys. Okay. Now we're probably going to have to do the matting and uh, putting the handles on in another video because I am just plumb out of time. those in, pull these corners in, and now I can already tell by looking at this that this is not a perfect box, 
by far and it's okay it's totally fine it is not a perfect box but look it will still fit in there just fine no matter which direction i put it in it will still <laughs> it will fall in if need be <laughs> right so it's not a perfectly perfect rectangle or a perfect box but that's what it should look like and then we're going to mat the bottom but let me do let me do these other two real quick and then i'll be back okay one last thing before we go i've got all these sides wrapped um all the way around i'm running out of time so i think what we're going to do is we'll mat the bottom and then i'll make a quick video to do the matting and stuff for the outside um, and the inside here and putting the handles on just because I'm just plumb out of time, you guys. I'm just out of time. So I'm taking the actual base that we traced on the chipboard for each one of these little crafty trays. I'm actually taking that template and I am gonna trace around those and then I'm gonna cut those out. So I'm going to cut these out and then I'll be right back. Okay, I have all three pieces cut out and we're not even going to ink them because we're going to come back and ink all the edges anyway. So I'm just going to attach them down, um, hopefully pencil side down. So I'm just going to attach them down. So I'm going to use Fabri-Tac because there's kind of some layers here. I'm just going to use the Fabri-Tac to help with that. And... I'm going to be real careful not to get any oozing because we know what happens when you ooze. The ink won't, um, won't adhere. So, there's one. Okay, so now we've got all three of our crafty trays wrapped, and let's do it like this, right? And so they're going to go, they're going to go in there. I don't know what order they're going to go in. I guess we could do it like this. Let's put the little tiny dude in the middle. Why not? Eh, I don't know. We'll see. Eh, I kind of don't like him in the middle. I like him on one side or the other. Let's try that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but anyway, so the next video, we'll go ahead and we'll mat these. Um, just like the other trays, we'll do some matting and add some handles and some stamping. And then uh, we'll be done with the crafty trays for this project anyway. Okay, you guys. That is all we got time for today. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Do let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let me know how your crafty companion is coming along or what you're building. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel before you go and hit that bell notification and turn those notifications on. And there should be some other videos here on the screen that you might enjoy watching. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.